Welcome to episode 108 of No Shame. Christmas week, man, it's hard walk out there. <laughs> I'm probably about 70 and stuff on heavy heart. Do you know the memes that we've seen coming out that relate to, relate to my life are unreal? Yeah, yeah. Did you, did you see the, uh, the Prince, Prince Lazim one? It's like walking out walk on Friday. It's Prince Nazim, look back in the day. Slick, ready to go, abs and all. And then the idea of him now. what he is now. The picture of him now. Yeah, I totally understand, Prince. Yeah. Pleasure to have this interesting dude on. Thank Scott you Altman. 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 I've been trying to get <laughs> this right before we started here. There's a, it's there's, no problem. There's yeah. a beer in Dusseldorf called Alt. <laughs> right? yeah. and that, that's it's like, not after me. The minute we seen your name, I was like, yeah. that, that's, that's what I was related to. I, was, cool. I could see a point. Yeah. But if you've ever drank Alt, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> alt is heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I used to go to Dusseldorf on, um, on Stags as I did. Yeah. And, uh, oh man, never again. Never right, again. yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyway. They, Too old for that now, man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a, a director, and you've done, yeah. you've done some massive stuff so far uh, uh, regarding stuff that's very popular in... Um, Ireland at the moment, but yeah. listen, I want to, I want to, I want to extract this information mm. from the start from your head. Yeah. So, we, we touched on it as well. I said about the idea of people trying to become a director back in the yeah. day. If you were trying to become a director, say living in, oh, I don't know, bleeding, living in Jobstown or something like yeah. that, and you wanted to just become a director back in the, in the nineties, you have to move to Hollywood, you have to like yeah. buy all these expensive cameras, and yeah. I'd say that the industry now is massively. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. I mean, like, you know, these days people can direct something with their mobile phone, you know what I mean, or whatever. And it doesn't even have to be a mobile phone, whatever you can get your hands on, you know. Um, I mean, with Instagram around, with all the kind of social media platforms, you know, everyone's pretty much a director these days, yeah. you know. And it's that's true. why, so, yeah. And look, uh, it's not even just people, it's, it's also like companies, you know, big corporate companies just pumping you know, huge amount, huge amounts of, uh, of videos, you know, video content out there um, that, yeah, it is just completely oversaturated. So it's very hard to kind of stand out for the crowd, from the crowd, even as an individual director or even for these big, huge brands, you know. It's amazing how fast people are getting, uh, who are getting good at it as well, because um, or maybe that's to do with the tools, because I uh, you know um, we've had that uh, way back, I think it was probably about two or three years ago. <laughs> Way yeah. back, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yahya's name is, and yeah. he is an incredible film producer. Right? Yeah. Now, at the moment, what he does is he goes and does things for cruise ships and all this kind of stuff. But when he first started, I remember, I think he, he I think he two thousand followers or something, and he said, "Paddy, yeah. give us a shot. Let's yeah. do this. Let's yeah. do it." And he came over yeah. and did a thing. Now he was he was into film well before this, yeah. but you want to see his stuff now. He's out yeah. in like the in Vietnam and all across yeah. and all this. Cambodia, all of these places, like I don't know, camera comes down to a leaf and then goes mm. up to someone's face and hands, and it's like film photography right. in a way, yeah, yeah. amazing beautiful, beautiful. stuff. Yeah. Now this kid is like twenty, you wouldn't yeah. believe it in a way, but you yeah. know what I mean. And he does this stuff with 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 uh, just gimbals and uh, mm. hand cameras and yeah. and all of this sorts of stuff. Yeah, well, I suppose like if you think about it, like when I started out, you you know, cameras weren't as easily accessible, you know, so it took a lot longer before you might get your hands on one, you know, unless your dad or something bought one, yeah. you know, and you had access to a, you know, some kind of mini DV camera or whatever it might have, have been. What are yeah. these things back in the <laughs> day with a video on and actually goes into the slab. slide of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, nowadays you have like newborn kids who are playing around with mobile phones and stuff. You know what I mean? Newborn babies even. Imagine what that's going to be like. Yeah, exactly. So you'll have directors, I don't know, five, six, seven years of age in the well, future, you know? My own young is trying to edit <laughs> stuff up already. So like... Yeah. <laughs> How old is he? Um, uh, 12. Yeah, 12. 12, yeah, I yeah. think about that. It's terrible, isn't it? Mm. Maybe I'm getting old. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? I've got one that's 12. I've got, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. How do you start this, like? Well, so, you're, you're, you're humble. You live in London now. Yeah, you know, London now. London, London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's up there. They'll be kicking you out soon, don't we? <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the Irish are okay. Seriously, yeah. I've been... Oh, you, know, no, I, I, you wouldn't, I wouldn't think, think that. <laughs> yeah. um, the Tory government coming in, you're going to experience a real situation over there. They were all yeah. right when it was hung. Yeah. Now they're going yeah. to be like, Paddy's, step forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the boats. <laughs> I well, I don't know, man. To be honest, I was only meant to stay in London for like three years, you know? I've been there for 14 years now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just... Yeah, it's a place, it's a very hard place to kind of live. Or sorry, not live, to leave. Um, you know, because you build up I your kind of crew. Live as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a competitive place it's to live. It's expensive. You know, and well. expensive. Yeah, 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 exactly. But um, 
Yeah, I only was made to stay there for three years and kind of move over to the States, but uh, I'd kind of built up my sort of network in the UK and then it being so close to Ireland, do you know what I mean, that I ended up, you know, and time just flies, you know, that I ended up staying there for, for that, for this length of time. But, um, and, you know, so I ended up doing well, like getting a lot of different projects, like working for, like starting off in animation, working for like the likes of MTV, did the MTV Awards two years in a row. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, then was also like directing my own kind of projects on the side from that, you know, doing videos, like mainly music videos for like people like Digitalism, C6 Steve, these type of, you know, artists. And uh, very different videos from each other too, because one was like very heavy on the VFX side, which was my background, computer animation and that kind of thing. You know, a full CGI world. Like, I shot these dancers on a green screen and uh, yeah, just like re replaced the whole, the whole green screen with this like futuristic kind of world. Oh, and uh, yeah, it's all the basically the kind of concept was like um what was it actually now i've gone blank it's been a while since i thought of the concept <laughs> yeah, yeah. You look, there's no, a million concepts like, in between yeah, that concept it was basically the music was gonna like grow like it was, was sort of uh, the lights you know on the on the ground on the ground plane was sort of moving towards these people that were way off in the distance and it was gonna like sort of grow up their body in sync with the music and bring them to life oh, really? and then they were just gonna dance you know to the to the beats and all that kind of stuff as they were kind of like lit up in, in by these lights you know so cgi kind of stuff plastered over their face and, and whatever else so you know I'll show you after this or whatever. But, uh, yeah, so it kind of, I at the time, man, it took like a long, long time to make. You know, it was over like six months, no joke. But we weren't working on a full time. And it's only like a, I think it was a five minute track. And uh, yeah, so, you know, we would take, because it was so intensive, you know, doing CGI work, it takes a long, long time. We would take a break for like a couple of months and then get back to it. And even like for the editor and the VFX guys and that kind of thing, you know, they just couldn't do it all the time. It was something we were doing on the side, you know, just in, in our, part time it makes up uh, yeah exactly it kind of thing. <laughs> and uh yeah it just yeah and then like obviously the c6 steve one was was very very different because that was a like, pure live action you know and uh we shot that in, in a pub in, in in shoreditch and then uh in on the baker street tube station oh, you know class. in the underground line yeah how was that? was that when you're, you're holding cameras down there and you're telling people to like, how do you create that, that, the world? That's, that's like. exactly what we were, like, I mean, the thing was is that people were just like, you know, going about their day, that's what daily, I mean. day to day life and we were there shooting like a, a film, you know, and this is like going back quite a bit, you know, it's not like nowadays, I mean, where it's probably more frequent people running around, you know, and uh, shooting whatever, but uh, back then, like, and you had, so you had this like, you know, he was in his 60s, I think he was like 65 or so, and he's there jamming away on his guitar in Baker Street tube, sta tube stations. People are getting on and off the tube and we're there with our cameras. And uh, it was literally just asking people like who were there at the time, would you mind like if we, you know, put Steve beside you on the, on the bench and just you're sat there in the corner or whatever, he's just playing away and uh, yeah. And then- Anyone throw a few bob at him? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. Yeah, we're gonna hit my coins. <laughs> <laughs> nah. nah. I was like, <laughs> poor oh, bastard. <laughs> Made some money there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, but uh, a lot of people did stop, and you know they were intrigued by it and him, and he's he's you know, he's an interesting character, and uh, yeah. So I mean, like even when we shot in the pub later on, like Amy Winehouse, who was alive at the time, she was there for the shoot. She came down because oh, her kill. her boyfriend at the time. Uh, he was a fella called Blake, I think. Um, so he was a big fan of C6 Steve, and he came, he knew he, he knew the shoot was happening. So they both came down, and uh, yeah, I wanted to get Amy into the actual into the video, but it, it wasn't possible. To, you know, the footage rights. Yeah, the footage kind of would have been yeah. incredible, man. But, but, uh, yeah, but the footage rights and stuff. Oh like yeah, that yeah, yeah. But I wasn't but, even that. Yeah, it was just. I don't know, differences of opinion, you know, with management and that kind of stuff, but, uh, you know. Politics. Yeah, politics. Yeah, the, exactly, big yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> the big P word. The big P word. It's better than the F word. <laughs> it's harder. <laughs> the yeah. F word gets less being less complicated. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? totally. Just yeah. end the story. And, uh, that's the way it is. Yeah. But uh, do you know what? Believe the only time we've ever been in London was uh, this year. Yeah. No, last year was the first time I was ever right. in London in my life. What were you now, doing over there? Um, I was doing BAM I was doing presenting a show I was um, yeah. uh, a foy show doing Class. and presenting but yeah it wasn't all that that's what I yeah, thought yeah, yeah. I was actually there before as well I went to I went to a do and I went on the, I went me and Toys and Fury ended up yeah. on the rip oh, yeah that would be some session it was alright yeah. It was all right, you, I have to say. Kept, I, would, I, would, I hoped that it was there. <laughs> you, it was bad. It was, yeah. was all right. It was a few Did weird. he keep himself kind of together? Ah, or you had a few? And... Tosh had to look after me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fair play. How fair does this play. start? How do you end up in London? Well, so as I said, how do you get... Well, I just... How do you get the balls? Yeah, well, this is what I'm going to say, man. Because um, you, you mentioned something there earlier about like sort of not being that impressed by London. And uh, I was the exact same as you. So when I started out in, in this kind of business, you know, after I graduated, I actually, you know, and I'd done a film... 
that was part of my sort of graduation project and then I continued it after that and finished it. You know, it was my first sort of animated film. It was about like a, a rat who wants to escape like this sort of inner city gloomy life that he has so he snorts crack cocaine to escape, you know, and that was a CG animation back in 2001. And then like at that time, you didn't really have kind of animation like that. It was more sort of, you know, you did have it, but it was a very small percentage. But, you know, um, the mainstream, like everyone you thought of animation or they thought of it as something for kids. But I was always thinking, now oh, this can be something for adults. You know, we can do it in a way that's sort of edgy, you know, extreme, whatever. We can do whatever we want. There's no boundaries. Like you know, that's, family going, them kind of things. Yeah, exactly. So then, yeah, but I guess The Simpsons as well, like would have been, you Simpsons know, even like back prior to that. I was actually mentioned that to you, Robin, the other day, wasn't it? But the idea of like Simpsons humor. Yeah. Like Simpson Geoma yeah, yeah. where the idea of like an adult can get it, a kid can get it, but it's it yeah. doesn't have to be yeah. that's hard. Absolutely. Simpsons yeah. already did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Simpsons already did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it that's hard though, isn't totally, it? Totally, like, yeah. So I'd say going down that road was there. That was that had to be a challenge. Uh look, animation it's so time consuming, man. You know you what I mean? It's, it's you like if you pick up a camera, you shoot it and then you edit it and get it out there or whatever, you know, you might do some colouring on it, that kind of thing. But uh, with animation you have to go through every single step of the pipeline. Do you know what I mean? You gotta like uh first of all like draw up what you want to kind of design. Then you gotta build it. Then you gotta like put a skeleton inside it like with its characters to sort of to bring it to life. You gotta animate it to actually make it move. You then gotta like or prior to that even like texture it, you know what I mean? Put the colours on it, the, the clothes, whatever needs to be. You know, so you got all these different steps and uh, talking about animation there, yeah. right? Um the first animated the proper kind of animated yeah. moving and singing and yeah. dancing was would I be right in saying the jungle book? Uh, I don't know. It was. Do I think it was. Um, <laughs> I, I I was watching this the other day because my uncle was mad about the Jungle Book, right? Yeah. And when Disney was bringing, there's a great actually, there's a great documentary on Netflix about this. Uh, mm. It's called Walt. Yeah. And yeah, it's about, I haven't seen it. Yeah. It's about Incredible. this stuff, but it's about yeah. the stuff you're talking about there. So yeah. if you want to get in a, a, a deeper understanding, well, that's even of what, like further back because that was like all hand drawn. So stuff. imagine how. So could, I say you appreciate that stuff, like. Uh, I do, I do, but um, I think because I came from like an art background, you know what I mean. So since I was. It's very young kid I was just always drawn you know what I mean during school whatever and I was kind of rewarded for that you know and, and, and praised for it and which then kind of encouraged you to sort of pursue that kind of path so I always sort of thought I always saw myself being on an artistic what kind school of road St Mary's College Rat Mines rugby school do you, do you know what? It's right on the Ratmines mm -hmm. Road, has the, the rugby pitch. Oh, it do uh, it. St. Mary's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Opposite the Ratmines. Animals yeah. of a rugby team. Yeah, that's the rugby right. Team. <laughs> Absolute animals, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Always play for Tyler and Guinnesses. I used to get smashed. <laughs> yeah. No folk yeah, at Mary's. Yeah. yeah, I think Johnny Sexton, like, he used to go there and uh, a couple of the other players and, and stuff. Oh, but, so that's uh, a crazy Dennis thing. Hickey. And, you know. Look, I was wondering who, because uh, to me, the lad that was drawing yeah. on the thing was getting kicked out of class all the time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, like, I, I, know the, I know the kid that mm. you're on about because in school, I don't think yeah. anybody listening to know the kid that you're on about. Yeah. That, that, that kid that, like, keeps quiet and just. But these. You'd have a free class, these masterpieces would end up on a table after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, in my scale, exactly you getting... the same with me. People will, you know, they would look at it and go, Where the hell does this stuff come from? Yeah, so like, you know what I mean? Like, this was like when we were quite young in like school. These demons, yeah, and demons monsters, or whatever else. Yeah, yeah, just, well, whatever, really, just like, ah. I know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You've seen my type. I know you. I know you. There's no 10 yeah. personalities in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those. When yeah. you're wrestling with them, yeah. you realize, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, wrestling is the, is the true language. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, no words, just. Uh, uh, cool. I've, I've, well, grappling and jujitsu has yeah. that ability. So, um, I've, I've grappled with people that we don't speak a word of English, but we're having a conversation. Yeah, because just all through the, the eyes. Just like and, and showing him how to do, yeah. and he showing me, and he'd catch me, and yeah. he'd laugh, and they know, and, and right. then you you feel, and they. It's hey, like a game, the game. Yeah. Just, they just yeah. know. It's a push pull. As I, I, I've described mm -hmm. it as it's like, um, it's like a control pad in the 90s. Up yeah. is down, down is up, left is right, right is left. Yeah, yeah. It's confusing. <laughs> but when you get it, yeah. you're sorted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, growing up. Mm. Where did you grow up? Sandyford. Sandyford. Up by, so I hung around sort of Sandyford Volunteer, that kind of area, you know, and uh, yeah, so I was like, I mean, I was around a number of different, we had like a number of sort of circles who all kind of came together and we sort of dipped in and out of those, do you know what I mean? And uh, we used to hang around the hills, the foot of the mountains, you know, and uh, yeah, we just, we had a pretty big sort of crew of, of people, you know, some of them like you are now sort of like well-known stars and, and that kind of thing, you know what I mean? That, uh, in in bands in in the film industry whatever that kind of stuff you know so, uh, so it was a pretty good upbringing yeah yeah man I mean I wouldn't I it was a yeah I can't complain man yeah. you know what supported I mean like, I, I was support, like that. you know what I was always encouraged by my parents you know what I mean? to pursue what I wanted to do I was never told oh you have to like when I was sixteen I realized I want to be a director 
you know. And 16. 16. Fair so that was what I kind of said, you know, that's what I want to do. But I was always... What made I that kinda, happen? I don't know. I just, you know I just felt that like that was the moment. next stage for art. Do you know what I mean? To bring my pictures to life. You know what I mean? I felt like that or, or working with people, with actors. And, you know, I just had a kind of... I was just drawn to... I think, you know, around that time, I sort of... I watched them... Um, a film by uh, Nicholas Rode, sorry, Nicholas Rogue, Nick Rogue. He's a British cult film director. He died there recently, but uh, called Bad Timing. And uh, yeah, I think, so I saw it actually on a school night when I was around 16. And uh, I was just, it wasn't something that sort of a 16 year old should probably be watching back then. You know what I mean? But, uh, that's a, you, know, you probably you know had to hack well. everybody's internet for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? The police and all would come to his house to be, woo! Okay. Have you yeah, yeah, yeah. the internet back then? Nah, look, it wasn't that bad, but what I mean is it was like a, it's a heavy, now getting it's shot heavy. through these bleeding <laughs> moving chains and portals, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, coming true. out the storms after one video. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's mad now, James. Yeah, yeah, totally mad. But it was a heavy subject line, do you know what I mean? And and that and uh look, a great a great movie. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, it's about sort of relationships and that, but how they kinda of like they go bad and, and, and that kind of thing. But um it's been a long, long time since I've seen it, but I remember it just it did stand out. I mean, obviously, a lot of other movies prior to that, you know, it stood out for me too. But uh, it was it was music videos as well that really kind of like they were my thing since I was a kid, you know, like the likes of Michael Jackson, you know, and all those eighties music videos, Aha, do you know what I mean? All this kind of stuff. That was what you know, all the hand drawn kind of animated stuff. Billy Jean the walking along the step. Up, yeah, the floor was yeah, lighting yeah. up. Like everybody, you know, loved that stuff. You know, it was the same. But it really because I had the art background, I really kind of I was trying to recreate all this stuff or, or draw, you know what I mean, and, and that kind of thing. So trying to draw Michael Jackson out of Triller. And or whatever else, you know, probably look ridiculous, but you know that was that was my thing. So even in school, man, um, like, and someone said this to me recently, not too long ago, a mate of mine. He goes like, you know, the teacher in art class would say to the class, right, this is what I want you to do, and he'd explain exactly how it's supposed to be done. And I would be like, okay, Grant, and I'd still go off. Everyone else would, would follow those rules. I'd go off and do my own thing, and I'd still get the best mark. And that's like my mate, like he always remembers this. In you know, he was good, very good at art as well, and. Uh, I, I didn't realise at the time until he said, I was like, yeah, you're probably, you're probably right, you know? But that's what I've always done. I you always just do my own. had your own view of... Just my own interest, you know? Art, art, art teachers uh, are the coolest motherfuckers ever, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an art teacher, right? And anybody that went to school with me, you'll stand by this called Mr. Blanton, right? Yeah. I am convinced that this man was high 24 hours of the day, <laughs> right? And he was, he was the nicest... Like uh, angriest person I've ever met. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He'd be floating around like this. He would grind. He'd be like, "Okay, Patrick." Split and then personality. Like, what the fuck did you do, man? And he'd be over there. And he would yeah, ripping yeah, somebody's yeah. picture up. That's not yeah. what I asked. Yeah. And then he go over to someone else. And go, That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Like, there was something wrong. So he had a quick puff then, did he? I, he, he was <laughs> in between like someone's project and that. He would go from being a Hitler <laughs> to being Mother Teresa. I'm not messing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember sometimes just sitting there looking like my, I spent most of my time. I used to say to me, me mate Dean, mm. um, I used to thought he was good at art right yeah. wasn't good at art he used to get thrown out of class so much that he'd always be in the art room right. I thought he'd put him there because he was good at art yeah, yeah, now he yeah. teaches here with me he's the kids coordinator here now mm. I think Fluffy both found that path I <laughs> used to think he was good at art but he spent mm. most of his time in the art room yeah, yeah, <laughs> were you yeah, slightly yeah. this kid or what was your art teacher like I had a number of different art teachers and uh, like one of them was actually a, a, a po is, is, I think she was a politician for a while after being an art teacher actually right. and um then the other art teachers. We need more of them. Yeah, I mean, art teacher politicians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be honest, they were all fairly laid back and, and mellow, and uh, because they knew I was interested in doing art and wasn't just there to dust. Do you know what I mean? That I was actually I had a kind of talent for it and that kind of thing. They, I had kind of an easy run in art class. You know, but whereas maybe not the same in, in other classes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, you can't have it all. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't have it all. But uh, I still think I kind of got the, a little bit of a you know, uh, better treatment because they kind of knew, okay, he's, he's good at art or whatever. It's the same as if someone's good at sports. I mean, I did, I used to play rugby and stuff as well, but you know that way, like the best person at uh, sport in your school, they would kind of, if they weren't. You were a heavy tackler playing rugby and rugby? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> the art guy was always a heavy tackler. Long hair and he'd reach off. Wrong! <laughs> Yeah, bloody hell. But um, you were saying earlier on as well, like, so where did it go from then? And about kind of cameras, you know, about nowadays, and it was something I just wanted to touch on. It was uh, about like kids nowadays having access to mobile phones and that kind yes. of thing, such a young age. I mean, I only actually shot 
my first sort of live action piece at 19 years of age, right? So when I graduated from school, ever then myself and my mates, we went over to San Francisco and we ended up living over there for the yes, summer. I wanted to ask you about yeah. this. Who, who told you that go and travel? Because you, you were young at this time, right? Yeah, yeah. And whoever that, told that was you 19, that was so. on the ball. Because I say this to no, people now as well. To be honest. Traveling is massive. Yeah, it for is. For a young person. And that's another thing, actually, that because you'd said about it earlier on and uh, what I wanted to say was that I, you know, my mind was quite closed. Not, not like, I just hadn't seen much of the world. Do you know what I mean? I thought Ireland is the only place for me. I'm going to be here making films for the rest of my life and that's it. Do you know what I mean? And then I ended up like traveling around the world. Not just like uh, the time in San Francisco, that was only a summer trip, but I mean actually doing a year trip around the world with my mates. So we went, started off in LA or you know California, then went across to New Zealand, Australia, then all around Asia over the, the course of a year, yeah. you know. Is and that one um, of the visas that, um, yeah, it was like a J, oh, no, a J no, I don't think it was a, I can't remember what, it, what the story was with the visa. I think we had to get like different visas for each country. It wasn't like a, a just a one country visa, you know what I mean? We so, ended up at the Mayweather, uh, Way in with a load of Jay Woodheads. <laughs> I was on the set. Oh, Robin, we went on the session. Good fun. Yeah, we yeah, had yeah. no ticket to the way in. Right. Would you believe? Jesus. I had tickets to the fight. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm. The Mayweather and Connor mm. fight. And I bumped into a load of Jay Woods outside. Right. I won't say, look, not they didn't know me, but they, they didn't. I ended up bumping yeah. into them. I was like, sound. And then we're walking into the fight. And I'm like, we have a spare ticket for the way in. So I jumped in. And this is how we knew about yeah, Jay Woods. Because yeah, yeah. like, what are you all down here? Yeah, yeah. And they were explaining to me what Joel yeah, was playing. Yeah. And on the way into the fight, they brought me in. And then people started getting photographs and all. They were like, the fuck is going on here? Man, you could be right. Maybe the J1 like, was when I was in Australia. That's where the visa, the visa might have been for there. So I worked over there. I actually I worked on the visas. ships. <laughs> I know me yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, um, well, J1 heads are sound. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, um, when I was asking them the questions, I was asking them, like, it was amazing because I, I would have been a little bit older and I was yeah. saying to them, do you know what? This mm. is brilliant. The, your age and is are coming to see this part. Of the, like, I, I could nearly see what it was going to do. Like I'd been to Canada when I was very young. I'd been to a lot of places yeah. when I was very young. And I knew when I came back, mm. it was different. Tommy Taylor yeah. talks about what you ever seen. Yeah. He says, I was different. I've been yeah. away. But what? I've been in to Atlanta. How, how, yeah. <laughs> yeah, from that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but it's, it's just different when you travel. You become yeah, a different so, person. And what happened to you? Um, when I travelled and I came back, I was different. I was definitely... Mm. I was, I was much more cultured. The world was a lot bigger in my yeah, mind. Yeah. And then the idea of being able to make it yeah. was in my stomach. Like mm. I remember going away and I, it was jiu-jitsu I was away mm. for. So I was training over there. I was competing. Yeah. I won a gold medal I did over there. And there was no yeah, magic dust anymore. Yeah. There was none of this. Like The only thing that I had was hard work. And going mm. over there made me realise that you know what? Yeah. I'm delighted that that's the only thing it takes because yeah. I was afraid I was going to go somewhere else like I don't know and then all of a sudden you fi you figure yeah. out that it's all it's a scam it's mm. a scam yeah. you don't have yeah. to be talented you don't even have to work hard you just have to know the right people now I know no, that this is no, part no, of no. it no man that is a huge part <laughs> <No>. <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> that's a huge part of it in I've my never... world not as yeah. much yeah. well maybe now maybe yeah. now but not as much because be fighting is is fighting but in your yeah. world see this is what I love about afraid. fighting right because it's so exposed it's like open you know what I mean that you can you can just see there everyone can see the general public can see who's the actual winner and who's the loser yeah. sometimes if it comes down to directing or other stuff like that there's shit in the background that's going on that's preventing you from maybe progressing do you know what I mean so you're being held back you know because you're not winning you're not being commissioned yeah. you know someone else who's the favourite or may know someone might get it over you you know but then you you can obviously you keep pushing on and you can get past that too do you know what I mean but it's perception about it's about being able to, to push on perception you know? is a massive part as well and I think a lot of companies now are focused on you now because yeah. you do filming for mm. uh, companies now yeah, yeah. and uh, like influencers all of this stuff that's yeah. out there now like uh, the the Rubber Bandits had a video commission did you see that they did I didn't see they that made a video where they yeah. had loads of influencers um, try to sell a drink where I think it was chloride peroxide in it or something like that it was the same oh. thing I think they used in like in a, in, in, in yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. concentration camps it was the same kind of Jesus. chemicals and these guys are saying like you should drink this drink it's got melanin in it it's got such and such oh, peroxide in it it's got this and these influencers for money are selling this drink mm. and uh, to me that's yeah. what's a lot that's what's dangerous about film now because you can yeah. if someone has the right platform and the right money they have the ability to make themselves so much better than you without actually doing it. So yeah. I think there's a... There's I guess a, there's the flip side. Like well, the hard work side it. of it. The yeah. hard work side of it, to me. Hard work takes a long time to come through. So if mm. you're working hard for 10 years mm. and you're really, really, really talented, mm. 
it takes about 10 years to run. People yeah. can can hotwire that system now. Yeah. See, it's, 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 totally, it's, see, it's changed. You know, the times have changed since when I started out, I guess, as well. So when I started, like, people were putting videos on YouTube, but they weren't of a good, really high standard. Do you know what I mean? It's more like homemade yeah. kind of videos. Nowadays, like you said earlier on, people who are starting out have access to all this amazing equipment can make stuff look beautiful. You know, very, very easy. Filters. You know, filters and whatever phone, else, and like and the you can shallow depth of the field and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, and, um, but it does still... I don't know, to, to make a quality piece, you have to have talent, you have to have experience, you know what I mean? You have to just be good, you know? But And, and there are people out there like that, you know what I mean? Because you can see it everywhere. Um, but I guess what I was just saying sort of earlier on that like where I kind of came from was I didn't aspire to be, you know, in the early days, like a, a blogger or a vlogger or, you know, YouTube or this type of person or an influencer. I wanted to be a director and it was a different kind of process back then, you know? So it was sort of... You weren't like kind of like selling yourself or just promoting yourself online, you know, as much as people do now. Like, so it is a lot more transparent now. People can just like upload stuff onto YouTube and or wherever or Instagram and uh, it can potentially just be like a boxing match or a, a MMA fight. People get to see whether it's good or not. But then you do have the, the other side of it where people can pay for, you know, fake likes or followers and all this kind of stuff or, or just promote themselves. This is and, what I'm running which, about. Yeah, and that's... Uh, that's the other side of it, you know, because so you do have people then who maybe don't have the talent or, or that, but they're they have a huge sort of popular Absolutely. account or it appear, appears like that, yep. and then they're getting like they're getting work, you know what I mean, or, or whatever they're getting the opportunities. But that's that's business, you know what I mean, as well. If you look at it as a business, I mean, you know, that's like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to sort of explain it, but if you look at it, the problem, I think when I was growing up, art. Like even in, in when I studied it, we were never really told about the business side of it. You know that it was all about just creating, creating, creating. But that doesn't help you make money. Do you know what I mean? So, um, like if 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 it works like that for someone where they can actually, you know, gain popularity and and get make money and and, and create a career, then fair play to them as far as I'm concerned. But then, you know, if someone else can't do that, you know what I mean? It's 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 a hard one to explain. But do you see where I'm kind of where I'm going with it? Here's my problem with all yeah. of this, right? Yeah. So if you message me, right, and it's a human instinct, and I hate it, I feel like ripping my eyeballs out when it happens, right, because cause yeah. I'm worried into the system as well, and so are you, Robin. So if someone mm. messages us to jump on the podcast, right, mm. um, we don't put anybody on here because of followers. Of, it's, if you're an yeah. interesting man, yeah. you're on. Yeah. All right, but it, it, you can't help it. If somebody messaged the page that has, say, a million followers and a blue tick, and somebody messages the page and has 2,000 followers, no yeah, blue tick. Yeah. That person with 2,000 followers yeah. could have put 10 years into their craft yeah, exactly. and have a massive, mm. like, the, the best quality stuff you can mm. ever see. Yeah. But unfortunately, your brain will always kind of go towards the yeah. idea of... The, the, well, popularity. That or many people that, like that. Yeah, it must yeah, be good. Exactly. Um, yeah. And here's something you mentioned about business. So in that is what I'm going to say to you, is the world has changed. Mm. In business... There's a few rules, right? Yeah. And the rules are, mm. right, that it will always change. People come to me and say, yeah, well, that's just business. And it's like ripping someone off or it's doing whatever, mm. right? Yeah. There's ethics to everything yeah. and they never change. Ethics. And they say, like, um, I, look, I'm not religious or anything like this, but the, the Lord of God, if you must. Mm. Be good to people. Be mm. kind to people. Don't yeah. rob people because it's a horrible thing to do. Mm. But people... Business changes and laws yeah. change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing that doesn't change is ethics yeah. and all of these yeah. things. So to me, that's my business mantra. No, that's, I'm, and, and guys yeah. go, you well, people are robbing, sell you. And I'd be like, you're so what? So what? No, yeah. no one will ever no, have I'm not saying that no, it's no, right. No, 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 you mean? I'm no. just saying that's the Listen, world we live in. I'm trying to give and, you. Yeah, I hope like, you live here where you're like, you know what? That motherfucker, that was, that was right when he said. Because mm. what I do is mm. I stick by that mantra. Yeah. And I know that Globally, in a hundred years, yeah, that will never change. Hopefully, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. We're walking around half robot, and all, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But the idea of business, business will change and it will change again. So, say, um, and a, a huge understanding came from this from watching that film, right? Mm. I love films, yeah. And I, 12 Years a Slave, oh, yeah. 12 Years a Slave is about a time where a guy is actually uh, the slave trade is dying down, mm. but people don't want it to die down, yeah. And uh, the guy actually says this to one of the guys in it. He says, he says, that's my property. Yeah, yeah. And he says, yeah, by law. And the mm -hmm. guy goes, yeah, by law, says that's my property. And I can do what I want with my property. And he says, mm -hmm. yeah, but law changes. Yeah. He says, someday the law might change to where you are his property. That'll yeah. never happen. 
And yeah. the guy says, I lead by <laughs> ethics. And it's yeah. a brilliant way of looking at it because yeah. someday these big, huge guys that are pushing these people and building up these, say, you mm. I don't know, these cardboard fold out stars, mm. yeah. X Factor, yeah. all of this kind yeah. of things that take yeah. no responsibility yeah. for these people after this fame has been yeah. ignited. Yeah. These people in their own brain are like, oh, I'm famous. Like, we're the. Mm. And it can last for about six months sometimes, yeah, eight true. months sometimes. Fast turnover for bands, musicians, whatever. For do you know what I'm saying? Ce celebrity kind of. So TV to me, stars, people whatever. and what, the way they look at it is go, "You're very lucky that we even gave you a chance." Mm. And I know, but that other person now, I don't know, feels suicidal or something because he's not hey, famous anymore. Mm. And, and people are like, <laughs> "Yeah, but it's right. right. I should just shut up and and feel like this in a way." So to me, this is what this is the biggest part of it all. So yeah. when you're doing something, what you're doing. If you're going right. and you're doing it for what you did, right? And this leads me on to what you're doing. So, mm. you've created a documentary called yeah. Home, 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 Home. Yeah, incredible documentary. Brilliant. Thank so, you. the idea of why? So, tell, like, me, I, how I tell, you, tell me how this yeah, I didn't know much about homelessness whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? Like, except for seeing the people that I walk and you would on see the it in London an awful lot of time. everywhere. I and a lot of them would be called forgotten Irish. Am I right in saying? Man, so. My, my, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I saw it everywhere. I saw it in the US. My first experience with homelessness was when I was like 23. And I went and I said I went to travel around the world. And actually, I, I lived in downtown LA for, you know, I spent a bit of time there before I went down to New Zealand and Australia. And I stayed in a place called uh, Skid Row. No, sorry, I didn't stay there. I was close to Skid Row. And this is where there's like, it's literally a, kind of like a, an area with thousands of homeless people just on the streets, living in cardboard boxes, tents. They have their lives in trolleys. Now you you know it's like something from another from a movie or from another planet. I've never I'd never seen anything like this. And I wanted to film this the minute I got there. Do you know what I mean? I was just like blown away in the night. You know what I mean? It was just crazy. Probably but, saw um, this in Canada and now. Yeah, you probably saw it in Canada as well. Hasty, yeah, yeah. so I know I yeah. couldn't understand. Yeah, Fuck. yeah, and um, so same thing. I'd seen the like, homelessness around London obviously in Ireland as well and uh, when I used to come back and forth from you know from London to Dublin and we'd be out in pubs and stuff with my mates you know we I noticed the situation getting worse we'd be outside like you know people smoking or whatever but then we'd be getting stopped by people like sort of you know is this, in, uh, this in Ireland this is in Dublin like around so this uh, Camden Street kind of area what, what year was this I would say so if I move I've lived in London for 14 years now so it was probably over the last 10 years I, I noticed it kind of getting at that time know, would it be right in saying that um, homelessness would be connected to uh, drink and drugs and sometimes that's like what it looked pains. like the, the guys that I was seeing at that point they seemed like they were definitely addicted to drugs you know what I mean or had that kind of because that know, has changed yeah, drastically yeah 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 Hasn't absolutely it? Where, yeah, yeah. like and in your brain you like as so I said, I hate sometimes your mm. brain automatically makes these decisions for you, but it's yeah. just the speed of true life. It's a mechanism. Yeah, and I like, mean, th th that's the thing. I mean, it's... That's not the case now, though, is no, it? No, I mean, there's, there's a number of reasons, you know what I mean? It's it, it can be those. It can be, like, a family. It can be, like, just the journey of life. It can be, you know, not enough housing. It can be just losing your job, whatever. You know, there's there's a variety of things. Um, and But it can also obviously be alcohol and drugs too. Yeah. But, to um, me, look, that's what's in people's heads yeah, when, that's they, the when they hear type. homelessness, especially yeah. people that are in a really good lifestyle. People mm. that people that will never have to like probably understand really yeah. what it's like or, or mm. one of their own people to be homeless. You know, they're yeah. like, yeah, but it's like it's drinking drugs is the choice in a way. But today in Ireland, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a constructed problem and crisis well that was the thing man I, I never when I walked past these people on the street I never thought like or considered how they got there I just thought you know that it probably was something that they did like drink or drugs yeah, and, and, they, and they, it was, their, was, it was kind of like their own fault or, or something like that I had yeah. that kind of you know ignorant mentality mm -hmm. and uh, but of course look I did don't get me wrong I did donate you know to people and help, try and help them out yeah. and then as I got older as well you know we'd all been told oh, you know maybe don't give them money but buy them something to eat or, or that kind of thing Um but anyway, it was only really when I started to kind of, uh, so just to say how it started off. So I was went, I had an idea for Glenn's Christmas Eve bus that he does on uh, Glenn Hansard. Yeah. The bus that he does on Grafton Street. Yeah, so I spoke to him. He does, it, he does yeah. it every year. Been doing it for a long time. <coughs> Various different musicians come out and sort of support him and they play in front of the crowd. But um, so I had an idea for a while and then I ended up approaching him and uh, he liked what I had to say. And, you know, he sort of said that I could go along that year and, and film it you know, the whole bus with the different artists and stuff. But so many people turned out that year. It was like literally rammed on Grafton Street. People couldn't get in and out of shops and the police, they had to kind of, they had no choice but to, to close it down after a couple of songs. So I didn't get to film 
like really very people much. People close the shops. <laughs> yeah, they shut up. <laughs> close the show. You Let the it? people party. You know what I mean? <laughs> people are profit. Yeah, 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 exactly. But um, <coughs> anyway, then. So that night, the kind of you know afterwards, uh, the the bus kind of crossed over into Whelan's pub in the evening. So that's just had to get to me there, there for a second. Yeah. I think. So like this big magic thing was happening on Christmas Eve on Grafton Street. The lights, the yeah, chill, yeah, yeah. Glenn Hansen with a guitar. Yeah. And they and then separated then, everybody. No, the, the police basically came up on stage or whatever, sort of brushed through the crowd and pushed their way through, and, and sort of then just had to kind of stop the just shut it down. You know, uh, it was. Yeah, it, it was just overcrowded and it could have been become too dangerous right, and the rest right, of it, right. you know what I mean? Well, so it was yeah, for okay. safety, it was for people's right. safety. Um, but anyway, it crossed over then into Whelan's for a select few, it's like a private session. And so I, you know, went up to that and uh, I continued filming and I shot that entire sort of gig or as much of it as I possibly could. Maybe I didn't get a couple of songs. And uh, I've now sort of, you know, created a film for that, like out of that sort of session. And, and that's called We Will Sing. That's just been released today. Actually, I've released a trailer there last oh, week. Class. Yeah. So, um, and that's all in aid of, well, to support homelessness. I've seen the trailer. And yeah. It looks like Did a you? fly out of session. Yeah, yeah. Is Great that, crack. Kind of it was brilliant idea? crack. Yeah, like, like a fly I mean, on the wall. Out of yeah, session. yeah. It's flying the wall. Exactly. That's it. I mean, like it was nothing was planned. Do you know what I mean? It was literally me holding the camera up in the air like this, or trying like getting banged over by crowds, and these you know, it's like about, these it, are these ones we were talking about. Remember we were saying like sometimes being a director, yeah. then all of a sudden you get that warm. Yeah. Like, absolutely. And you'll be like. You will not believe how I filmed that. You'll be on the late, late in five years <laughs> talking about how you've got two billion yeah, views yeah, on YouTube yeah. now. Well, man, I hope, you know, this is the thing because when I do projects like this and coming from like music videos that were heavily supported by huge record labels and that kind of thing and getting lots and lots of hits and then I go and do something like this that's entirely independent, like no budget, just self-funded, just, you know, just hard work and getting people to do me favours, you know, who've been really good to help out, like different people in the industry in, the, in Ireland and in the UK and, uh, yeah, so uh, what I mean is you put yourself on the line. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you're you just putting something out there and you're kind of hoping for the best. You've no money to kind of pump to, to get hits or to try and promote it. You know what I mean? So yeah. you're relying enti entirely on sort of people spreading the word. Like people like Hot Press have been incredible. You know, they... they support my work like heavily so, yeah because I did a an advert for them which involved all of their uh, sort of covers you know a lot of them since from back in the 70s from when they started up and uh, right through to when I did the ad in 2013 and it's sort of just it's this high paced kind of advert just flicking through them with the with music from the Stripes the Irish band and uh, yeah. Yeah, so that ended up winning like I won like a best co won like a best director award for that with uh, with what are they called? I think they're called like it's wide-eyed media now. It used to be Carlton Screen Advertising. You know they do all the ads before yeah. the cinemas, yeah, uh, and hot press. And so, yeah, since then, and uh, you know now that I'm doing these films, hot press have really been very supportive with with these projects. And uh, just to say, like that. Oh, sorry. 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 What's that? It's all good. 106 <laughs> episodes and one mishap we let you wear it. <laughs> 108 episodes, all he's saying. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, the one. That's the one, yeah, yeah. You can maybe show a clip from it on the, you know. So you, you shot that there? No, no, this is all animation, right? So this is all where I've used the actual covers. I've sort of like scanned the covers, okay. put them onto a CG kind of box. Do you know what I mean? And... Uh, then I sort of animated them. Well, I worked, I, I kind of did the, the the sort of the initial animation. Then I worked with like Windmill Lane in Dublin to get that, you know, to finesse the final kind of ad, get the animation working right and, you know, uh, get Excuse it all. Excuse my ignorance, but yeah. kind of like, um, it's all right. Like a PowerPoint kind of thing, not like a PowerPoint, but oh, my my version. No, well, is it like, <laughs> is the software kind of like that, like in a way where you uh, upload more, everything into it and then they it's basically you which way they go and it's it's like just a normal it's it's a 3D package that they do all the, the, the main Hollywood movies and stuff in. So it's, it's it's quite sophisticated, but we just, I wanted a very simple kind of right. effect. You know what I mean? That was just, it is simple, but effective. And that's what I wanted. And that's very, the stripes in the background of that, That's the stripes, it? yeah. You can't judge a book by the cover. Daily? Uh, yes. So you walk with Kanye West. What the hell is Kanye like? What? <laughs> to be honest, man, nah, I don't, I can't say that I've actually worked with him face to face, right? When I did, I worked on a video of his called Black Skinhead, fully animated video, CG. So him, a CG version of him, and uh, you know that's the video from start to finish. It was an interactive music video. But um, yeah, so I didn't even know, like when I got this contract, that it was for Kanye. 
I just knew that a director that I had known, like he's a fashion photographer initially and he still is, but he also directs music videos and such, uh, that he was attached to it. Uh, his name's Nick Knight, a British, you know, fashion photographer. Um, so he's done like videos for Lady Gaga and stuff like this. So I knew that he was attached to it and I thought, geez, it must be something damn interesting because I admi admired his work since I was a teenager, you know? So I got like, um, I was told to come to a location in Mayfair in London, like a, you know, a five-star hotel or whatever, and to come up to the penthouse upstairs. Expensive on Monopoly, <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Very expensive. But um, yeah, so I went up and uh, once I arrived, I saw that, like I, I knew that like Jay-Z was releasing an album at that time and Kanye was releasing an album. I thought, fuck it, it must be one of these two guys, something for them. So I, I was damn excited. Do you know what I mean? I thought this is incredible. Be. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so I got there, arrived in the, the penthouse, you know, at the top of the hotel, and uh, I saw the name Black Skinhead, and, uh, you know, just on a computer screen or something. And I said, Jesus, this is Kanye's new video, isn't it? It was Kanye's album, his single. And they were like, man, sign this fucking NDA straight away. <laughs> You're not leaving until you've signed it. Yeah, you would die. <laughs> yeah. 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 Man, so I had to kind of like sign the, the document there and then. And yeah, then they revealed more about the job. And uh, we were literally, our base was in this like penthouse, you know, suite in, 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 at the top of the hotel. And uh, it was kitted out with like computers and, and a whole kind of like post-production sort of facility, you know. And that's where we worked for like the next sort of like two months, best part of two months on like delivering that CGI sort of Kanye video. And uh, yeah, it's, it was just like an incredible project to be part of and to do something for him. And uh yeah, I mean, a lot of hard work, you know, like it was long hours and that, but but worth it, you know, great experience. And you didn't get to meet Kim, no? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it all kind of started really from there, you know, with that and that kind of got the, the ball rolling. And uh, yeah, so we will sing just to say that it's, you know, that is in entire, I'm not taking any money from this, you know, f from that project. It's all going, like people make donations direct, can make the donations directly to uh, Simon Communities of Ireland or Peter McVeigh Trust. There's a website, like we will sing.ie and people, you know, it, it will lead them to uh, to make donations there. So it's just something that I've, I've just done, very small team, myself and another fella, uh, my co-producer, Mark Hogan, and uh, we just, you know, put this together and hoping to get it out there and hope people can support it and just, you know, try and get it, get as many hits and raise as much, as many donations as possible and, uh, you know, just see what happens. So yeah. going back to that one, home. Yeah. So home is a crazy word in this uh, country now because uh, the, I was reading a thing the other day and mm. a guy, um, a kid was asked, yeah. um, where does he live? And he said, the room. Right. The room was his, like, so he, he, he's not, he'd never so had he, a home. Yeah, he was only yeah, two and a half. A, he's two and a half. He's never had a home. Man, this is a, a few crazy. Christmases uh, the family have had in mm. hubs and uh, accommodation. So you mentioned, mentioned Peter Backferdy there. So yeah. Robin's put some numbers on the screen there. So yeah. in 1985, 6,900 social houses were built. Yeah. And in 2015, 75 social mm. houses were built. Mm. So it doesn't really take a genius to understand. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, because if you look at like Finland, they've eliminated homelessness Brilliant. altogether. Yeah. Well, this is what I, I'm yeah. not, I mean, this is what I've, I've read, I've seen it online and stuff. And it's just because they've literally given those that don't have a home a place to live. What they do you know? is they treat addictions mm. and they treat all of this stuff with home forced. I think that's what it's called. Right. So what they do is, is you come with yeah. an alcohol addiction. They say, okay, where do you live? I live on the streets. Let's mm. fix that. Yeah. They fix that first and then mm. they go into the, the yeah. problems that create these pains. And listen, mm. Ireland is full of pain. It's full of it because of the Catholic Church, the institutions, the yeah. the, the civil war, which is going back to the parents that raised the parents that raised us. Mm -hmm. And then we're in a situation where now we're in another institution. So some of these places, uh, these hubs and stuff like that, they're not all of them, not going against them or anything like that, but making massive money. Like you're talking about, I think... Uh, the, the Aberley Court was given since 2015 5 million euro. Mm. Incredible, all right? Um, and not only that, but some of the hubs, if say if you want to go out, yeah. if you're, you're homeless and you want to yeah. go out, you have to tell the person that runs the hub and, and kind of get permission in a way. And, mm. and you're not allowed to bring visitors in to some of them. And right. you're living in another institution. Yeah. These people are, are going to have the same pains that, yeah. to me, that, that was created in the Magdalene Laundries and the other institutions. Mm. Mm. What is it about Ireland that cannot just function without putting the people, the population, 
in the institutions in a way. I don't know. I just I do think there's a there's a little bit too much control in this country across the board. You know. Of. Uh, I don't know. Like, for example, like, I was just trying to, like, you know, even with the We Will Sing website, like, it's a totally different thing, but just the We Will Sing.ie, you know, but it's an, because it's an, an Irish, like, domain name. Just trying to get that online and stuff just took so much more effort, you know? Whereas if you go to .com, it's up, you buy it and it's up online in, like, five minutes, you know? But I had to go through this entire process, you know, just to, to make it happen where I think it was because I bought it initially like last week or sorry not last week last year uh, to try and launch that film back then but it's only going to get launched now it took a week for the domain name to get to go live you know what I mean and, uh, I was used to kind of buying dot coms or, yeah. and they would go up within five minutes and I'd be able to just you know and that's what I mean so I, I kind of find filtered is it so um, yeah, there's, yeah it's that kind of stuff so it is to stop anybody from abusing it you know and putting up you know Whatever the truth, they, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Put up the truth. exactly. Yeah, basically, because listen, my problem in this country is that it's um, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Right, and my man has been saying that, that everywhere, since I was a kid. Yeah, but that's that's a situation that need, like in this time of our life, right? Mm. We are li we've lived what so say this century is a yeah. hundred years, say right. Mm. That's nothing in the yeah. idea of millions of years. Oh yeah, people are going to talk about this century as that. As the mm. idea of like, so the people that are running this country now are like, are the descendants and people that had the money at the start, they didn't lose it and go and gain it. Like, mm. here, here's a good one for you, right? You know Owen Murphy? Yeah. Owen yeah, Murphy's yeah. grandfather, right? Yeah. His name was Robert Murphy and he mm. was an accountant. Mm. And he robbed Gayborn and all of his mates of two million pounds back in the day. Right. right? He was best mates with Gayborn and Gayborn was heartbroken over this. He is now the housing minister of mm. Ireland. His mm. brother is the actor from Love Hey, Tommy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tommy Murphy. Yeah, yeah, or Tommy, yeah. Not Tommy Murphy, but you can call him Tommy Murphy. The, the one that, 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 that drinks the orange, you know, yeah, like, yeah. feels the orange. Right, right. That's his brother. Now, I'm not going against that or not like that, but how does somebody's like legacy or uh, lineage start off with somebody that that robbed like a, 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 lot, of, a lot of really I, high people in this country and then go on to be a minister in this country? The reason is because the, le the landlords never left. Mm. The Brits never left. The mm. West Brits never left in that way. They are mm. still here. Yeah. And whoever controlled the money back in them days still controls the money now. And they controlled all of this stuff that you were on about, the mm. idea of being able to express yourself yeah. freely and stuff. Well, and within these hundred well, years, we're in a situation now where we're on the cusp of it. Mm. We could change this where the actual people that benefit from a country benefit from it yeah, not the yeah, people yeah. that just get keep getting richer because that's what's happening look at the numbers mm. that's not it's not rocket science no i know i yeah. actually i actually have some so you talk about it in the doc in the documentary yeah. mentioned some facts and figures um peter mcsherry i think obviously summed a lot of them up and mm -hmm. uh there's a few other charities that give numbers I, I think they were 2015 numbers but at the end of the documentary you put some some of the more up-to-date numbers up on the screen yeah and um, so I have some numbers here of, of where it's at now, currently in 2019. It's, it's doubled in the last like yeah. five years, you know. But so these numbers were just released in October. So 10,514 people homeless in the week of October 21st, 2019, across Ireland. The figures include adults and children. The number of homeless families has increased by 380 percent since October 2014. Mm. More than one in three people in emergency accommodation is a child. Wow. However, this number does not include hidden homelessness, which refers to people which are living in squats or sofa yeah, surfing yeah. with friends. Furthermore, yeah. women and children staying in domestic violent refugees are not included in the, these homeless yeah. emergency accommodation ca counts. The national figures also right. do not include people who are sleeping rough. So that shows me a massively failing policies that are already in here. And mm. um, what the reason why I went on this was to highlight the fact that they don't want America to know about this. They don't want all these other countries to know about yeah. this because they think Ireland's still... De -de 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 -de. And then when Leo Radka goes off and he has the Ireland flag and he shakes hands, and mm. he should be ashamed of himself. They all them boys should be ashamed of themselves. And then you have Michal Martin coming out yesterday. He literally mm. said, if I am Taoiseach, there will be no United Ireland under it. Mm. How the, the least Republican uh, Fianna Fáil leader that was mm. that ever existed. It's yeah. mental. 
Yeah, well, that's another reason. I mean, thing with with these films, which is why they're they're so independent. I mean, it's very it's very you know hard to get support, you know, for them. And even like we've sent it out to all the different publications, newspapers, and so on. I mean, it hasn't really gotten much of a mention yet, you know. But um, like home, it's been doing the festival circuit, and that is due for broadcast in Ireland with like a major broadcaster um, in 2020. So hopefully early 2020, uh, they want a couple of tweaks to the film, you know. Um, but if that's going to be shown there in front of the country, that's that's incredible. You've seen the documentary, you know, but... Um, now, we do have to ask you, sorry, yeah. because there is a situation coming about where a lot of businesses are promoting mm. themselves through homelessness. Now, yeah. we know that this yeah. sounds mental, but it's the same mm. time with the, the say, Pride. Yeah. Pride is now, like, mm. this. it's a business thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, now, yeah. people, everyone has a flag up, everyone's like, mm. and, it's, and like, listen, I'm for it, but... Mm -hmm. The idea, I don't think a lot of people that are struggle through the communities and struggle through, like, say, say the gay community mm -hmm. and then the homeless the community. I know for a fact if I was homeless and I seen this big, massive kind of, like, popularity coming around me, I'd be like, what's going mm -hmm. on here? Help <laughs> me. Help yeah. me well, now. Well, look, the thing is, like, what I'm saying is uh, I'm not making anything from either of these projects. Oh, no, look, I'm not, no, I'm not no, no, saying No, no, just, just so... I know like, you're I, doing this, you're doing this as a... As a it's just to try and help. I had the opportunity that stemmed from what I was starting to do with Glenn but then it didn't happen and then yeah. Apollo House was kicking off at that time I got access to Apollo House you know because I, mean? I went down on Christmas Day to see what was going on after filming in Whelan's I ended up meeting some of the people down there who were organising it like Glenn was there Jim Sheridan was there and people like this Terry McMahon Dean I didn't Scully. see him D yeah Dean and, Dean's a uh, madman isn't he <laughs> 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 he dropped me a line on, on Instagram there recently and stuff and uh, but he was showing us support for the for the project, which was brilliant. Oh, you know? and he, he yeah. was the one who he was the one who put me away to homelessness becoming um, an industry. I didn't yeah. know that, and yeah. then I start realizing, and I'm like, no, he was like, like this. How could homelessness be an industry? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, if you Google like so a lot of these, like, say a lot of the charities, and you look at the Google the, the numbers mm. of the CEOs, they got released already. They did. I, th I tell them, you, I tell you, man, ninety grand. Reason, some of them are making the a year. Yeah, no, fair enough. But the, the reason why I did these projects, like, not just having the opportunity, but I wanted to cross over from short form, which was like adverts and music videos, you know, like four or five minute things, or, or even in adverts, thirty seconds, forty five yeah. minute, and so on, to then doing long form because I wanted to do films, you know. So it just kind of worked out that when I was had then made that decision, you know, and that's why I contacted Glenn, then it crossed over into me sort of having access to Apollo House. Oh, okay. I didn't plan on doing like a film about the homeless in Apollo House no, or, I know what you or mean. homeless yeah, yeah, on the yeah. street. It just kind of organically happened. So when like, I, if there was no one else filming it, yeah, it wouldn't have been filmed. Yeah, so. that was it. It's a moment in time that was captured and I, I got to meet then, not just Apollo House, but the people actually on the streets, you know, so I continued with it over the next, you know, number of years until now it's only been released in the last sort of when was it an end of October or something started doing festivals and like it was awarded there at the Dublin Independent Film Festival won like best short documentary 35 minute film man. thank you very oh, much man. and you have to remember right there was no support no f no f funding or anything like that it was just something just getting off my ass and getting out there with a camera and just sort of meeting the people and then just put, getting favours from different people who could help me out here in Ireland and the UK in terms of Respect editing and that, that kind of stuff, audio. Yeah, and like I say, I'm not, you know, necessarily a documentary filmmaker. You know, that's not really my background. I've done a, f a few things, just like with mates and that and then in Thailand as well. But um, I just had this opportunity and when I got down there and started filming, I said, you know what, man, I just, it opened my eyes. Grabbed your heart. Yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. And I, I realised I have to continue with this, but I got to like, it's not just about Apollo, it's about the people who are actually on the streets. Absolutely. Who, and that's what the next phase was for me, was getting out there and meeting the people. The first person I came across was a fella called Tommy. And uh, he was just opposite Trinity College there, just down by gr past Grafton Street. And uh, he was just literally just with a sleeping bag around and people just walking past and crowds of people just, you know, it looked in a really bad way. Just like rocking himself for some form of comfort, you know what I mean? Just like, and I was I could, just, nobody seemed to be kind of like taking any note of him or giving him anything. He had a paper cuts, cup sat beside him. And uh, so I eventually went over to him, started speaking to him and I just, you know, he came to life, you know, just through some human interaction. And uh, we started getting on. I realized, fucking hell, this guy has a great character. You know what I mean? He, he, I could actually see this guy could be someone. Like, everybody can be someone, but do, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. he had, like, I hadn't even heard him, like, perform or anything at this stage. You know what I mean? But I just saw it in his eyes that this guy, there's something like, very special about, about this guy. And, um, yeah, so we got on really well. In, and uh, 
he then sort of uh, told me that he was he had, he had a passion for music and uh, he was a rapper. And so I asked him, could he perform, you know, a rap for me there, there and then on the street with people walking past? And he started doing this like, rap about homelessness. I called, I think it was on homeless. If you um, haven't seen this, yeah, check it out. Yeah, hopefully we can show the guys a clip. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's not, put a it's clip not on the like podcast. A, it's not a basic rap. It's yeah. yeah. Dublin is home to almost two million people, but today, more than ever, its streets highlight the disparity between prosperity and impoverishment, with a growing number who struggle to survive. I'm homeless, living rough on the streets, I got no food to eat, I got nowhere to sleep, I get down the street to the welfare, put the welfare I had the other day, the fuckers don't care. I don't know what I'm gonna do, a training outside, there's holes in my shoes, some water getting through. I never knew what it was gonna be like until I got kicked out of my house that night. Now I'm roughing it, got nowhere to live, asking people on the street to give what they can give. The people they just walk straight past, but to me a simple was made of glass. I'm homeless, but I'm human too. I'm no different to any of you. It's just your ignorant attitude. It makes you feel like I'm nothing to lose. I'm homeless, but I'm human too. I'm no different to any of you. It's just people's ignorant attitude. It makes you feel like I'm nothing to lose. Homeless. It's a crisis. So I was just blown away. I was filming all this you know, and then kind of speaking to Tommy on and off sort of camera or, you know, and that kind of thing. And uh, so then I kind of, I noticed that once I sort of interacted with him, I, I was sat on the floor with my camera beside him. Do you know what I mean? And uh, people then started to kind of interact with him more. You know what I mean? Just because I, maybe it made him a little bit more approachable or something or whatever it was, you know? And, and then a woman came up, gave him like a baguette. And uh, he complained. <laughs> no, sorry, he didn't. <laughs> Tommy, he, <laughs> he didn't complain in that way, right? He complained um, because when she walked, he said thank you very much. She walked off, and then he opened it up, and he kind of he complained that there was no meat in it. It was veggie. It was a veggie. A fucking she veggie. Was a veggie. <laughs> I'm a carnivore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so then, but man, the thing was, no, he said, you know what, Scott. You know, I don't even think he knew my name at this t at this point. But anyway, he said, "You know what? You'll never go home or hungry in Ireland. The people are, t are are so generous. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that they'll always give you food. And uh, so, you know, that I could really see that he was very grateful for everything that he he, he was given. You know what I mean? Yeah. He even though he was making a joke, it didn't. I know there's yeah. some incredible people out there, but it is we are in a situation where like, um, say if say if you do say if someone did mm. give somebody a sandwich like that and they didn't like it, yeah. It, you still oh, he had it. He had yeah, it. but you still have the right, like it, uh, as I yeah. said, where homelessness yeah. becomes normalized yeah. in a way where it's like someone he's say just it's, a normal person. Yeah, absolutely, you know I mean? that's absolutely. it. Like he's no different than anyone else. Say a woman would hand him a get to somebody like that and he complains and be like, like "How mm. dare you complain? We're going yeah. back in time if <laughs> yeah. that's the situation. If yeah. Tommy doesn't like a vegetarian yeah. roll, you he know, can say that. That's exactly but you know what, what I mean. That's, that's like, exactly why I like saying that point. Brilliant. But that also the fact that he doesn't, you know, he doesn't like he appreciates every. You know every offer, of donation that he receives. You know what I mean? Like he he realizes that the people are, are so generous. You know, and he's grateful for. Hopefully, that. that's not what the government have sourced out. Really yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think it's too generous. You know what? No, there could be a, a part part of that yeah. that they know, like that people will actually will will do their job. You know, and and and, and donate and not uh, all Morphe and all that. No, 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 no <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But if they no, did that I mean, job, that you the wouldn't public, have to worry about the public this. Yeah, will, no, I agree. Are the ones who are actually doing the, you know, and the and the charities. You know, but um, like, but it is, it the, is. We've we've got we like the 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 biggest thing, and the thing the, the thing that I, not that I hate about this is that, um, like charities are are a massive driving force of yeah. of communities and stuff like that now. Mm. And at the moment, the one that's taken up a lot of the resources is is the homelessness crisis. Yeah. Where to me, then a lot of charities are going to suffer for that as well. Where the government that's, should be the ones looking after it. Well, that, do you know what, man? That should be a crisis. This, it should be an emergency situation now. Like, especially at this point, when you're looking at the numbers like that, the reason why it's not is because it's contained in Ireland. It's not embarrassing these guys when they go to mm. shake hands at the parade in Boston. Mm. If I was the mayor of Boston and Leo Vrat got trying to shake my hand and I knew about this homelessness crisis, I wouldn't shake his hand and I'd say, go home and fix your homelessness crisis. Mm. And then you would see a change. Yeah, that's true. You would see true. a massive change there yeah. because... What I'm, what I'm not I'm not in the club anymore, and that's the way <laughs> yeah. it would be. I'm telling you. And now, but if it's in Ireland, it's like mm. 
don't mind them. They don't <laughs> care about us, man. That's just being straight, Scott. And yeah. I'm, I've seen that. Like, cause I come from, well, a, I come from a council in house the in US. The you mean? No, sorry, the, the US is our, our biggest hope. But who are you talking about? The government care. I'm on about. I'm oh, on right, about, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. government don't really care, and it's 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 plain to see when we see what well, they do. What about the charities who are funded partially by the government as well? I'd love to see the CEOs. That's all yeah. I'm going to say, right? Because mm. I know that there's people that are ministers. There's a Sinn Féin ministers that are in there taking an industrial wage. So mm. they're where only last week they signed to give the so that the the TDs these these uh, this year have got a raise. They got yeah. seven thousand euro worth of a raise. Yeah. Listen, this is the equivalent of a shop being on fire. Say if you walk in Century, the shop is on fire. Mm. There's people in there, the still, and you're standing outside, and your boss comes up and gives yeah. you a raise. That would be the same equivalent in a way. Yeah, yeah. So these guys, so uh, the Sinn Fein TDs refuse this rise. Mm. We don't. No one deserves this rise. The TDs definitely shouldn't be getting a rise now. Mm. Uh, all the yeah. other boys took it. Owen Murphy, all of these guys. So uh, Owen Murphy has been up to being kicked out of his job, Brilliant. but he got a raise this year. Right. Uh, the other lad for the, the health minister, uh, Simon Coveney, he I think it was last year or maybe the start of the year, he got a raise. So mm. so that boy's got a raise this year. So to me, if you're a CEO of a charity and you're taking home ninety grand, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with that. Because the minister, oh, yeah. the TDs, Sinn Féin TDs only take home an industrial, and people before profit as well, I'll give them that, they take the, they only take mm. home an industrial weight. Mm. So half of that money goes into the party to yeah. build in the, 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 the awareness of this. Yeah. Now, these guys, so say if the government are giving these charities big amounts of money, it, it's another, it's another yeah. little system that's going to keep going on. Like where, yeah. okay, you take 90 grand, but I'll give you this much money and, and you give me the numbers. And so it's yeah, a, yeah, it shouldn't yeah. be like that. Homelessness yeah. should not be a situation where people are able to benefit from it. Well, this is the thing, man. And that's why I'm not handling any money from the films. You're better off, man. I'll throw no, back no, no, you. Dude, I don't want people, you know, to look at it like from, from that kind of perspective. I just want to, and that's why I want that the films actually try and get as much exposure as possible. Yeah. So we'll the money can We're actually go straight. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that, man. Um, so the funds go directly to, to, to both charities, you know, then, and, and that's it. They then look after, you know, do what they can with the, with the, for the situation. Um, have you, you know, looked I, at that situation? Sorry? Have you looked at the charities where, where the, the money goes from, from there? To be honest, no. You should. I mean, yeah. You should. Now that would just be my advice as a as a person because <clears throat> I do so look, I do a lot for charity, Scott. Mm. Right? I do amazing yeah. stuff for charity in the way of like now don't post about it. Mm. I go around schools, I go around prisons, yeah. I go all sorts of places and I yeah. do stuff for charity. But when someone asks me to post then about a charity, mm. you will meet resistance, you will meet uh I wouldn't post about a lot mm. of charities. People yeah. will say, can you post about the work you did for us with the charity? Yeah, and I'll yeah. say no. Yeah. Because I'll send them a link to the boss of that charity and they'll mm. go, Wow. Wow. <laughs> Because yeah, these yeah, charities yeah. sometimes can use people like you. Yeah. To be honest, to get they, didn't, people they, like they me. didn't ask me to do this film. You know, the only reason I went with these charities because I was connected to Glenn in the beginning. They're the charities he works with for. You know, when he when he does the Christmas Eve bus on Grafton Street, he donates whatever is raised to those two charities and from whatever other work he does over the Christmas, you know, or even throughout the year. So yeah. that's why I felt. Do you know what these these two projects kind of initially stemmed from Glenn? So they're the two charities yeah, yeah, I'm gonna no, go with. Agree. That was okay, the, that it wasn't like I mean at the same time I did kind of <clears> think man. There's a lot of people out there doing stuff for homelessness. Why am I kind of following that? Like, why don't I do, you know, dedicate these films to mental health or something like this? Mm. But at the same time, it came back to the, the Glenn situation. I thought it's probably, it's only right that it, it goes to those charities since, do you know what I mean? Um, that's how it stem, where yeah. it stems from. Now listen, I'm not against charity. Yeah. I'm not against that. All I'm against it. I'm not against people working yeah. for the charity and making a wage. I'm not, no, no, I'm not against no. that. But I mean, the, Everyone has to survive. in a charity would be yeah. ridiculous. Like, mm. and I said, there was a big list of uh, all the CEOs what they were making in these yeah. things. And I said, I've done stuff for charities, and then people have said to me, "Can you post that about that charity?" And then I'll sell mm. them a link, and they'll be like, yeah. oh, "I didn't know that." And to me, that's the biggest shame. Mm. It's the biggest crime in a way, you know. Oh, like, yeah, like, absolutely. Because you're man. not going to be earning ninety five grand. I'm earning peanuts. Listen, <laughs> and I, I, listen, and I don't even laugh when you say that because yeah. they, these days, like, mm. I, we have a we had a mayor of South Dublin that was um, homeless for six months. Mm. Mm. He's now Mark Ward has just been elected as a TD, and he's in there doing the right stuff yeah, now. He's yeah. in there, he's he's been he's in there two or three weeks, and the amount of stuff he has did is ridiculous. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. You have Pierce Doherty with this other uh, the, the insurance companies had to get this passed by Christmas yeah, as well. So uh, yeah. there's a lot of robberies going on in this country, Look, and what happens is the people separate themselves from from the robberies. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, in a way, yeah, and they yeah, use yeah. good people sometimes to go forward and. 
and, yeah. and receive the goods in their name or if or, you must you know yeah and no, absolutely I can, I can understand I commend what yeah. you do I really think it's great and like, do you know what I'm I'm looking forward to sitting down and, and seeing the reaction that this gets this uh, this and, and, and yeah and, it's been it's been fairly positive so far do you know what I mean it's been uh, yeah a lot of everyone who's seen it has come back to me like at festivals they've come to me afterwards and you know said that it really kind of they, it hit them like the best comment I've had is it's from a few people they said that it, uh, it opened their eyes in terms of that they, they they now look at the people on the streets in a completely different light massive. you know that they that's didn't massive. they didn't realise I think that's what it is it's just education people just didn't know and they didn't know that the people's stories you know the stories behind the people that are there sat on the street corners or wherever it might be you know and then actually hearing about that and you know, you know I've been able to empathise with them and you know that's that's what makes a difference I think yeah no, you massive. Know? and if you, if you had the ability to do that and the stuff we touched on yeah. at the start was the thing in your head that unfortunately sometimes we all have it and it, mm. it, it helps us get through life faster that um subconscious thinking of it. If you if you were able to do that with this, what do you mean to, to visualize something? No, or well, if you walk you past mean? somebody on the street, as you said, look, we had we at the start of this, and it's like yeah. people, you're you're it's you're wired in you to be like it's um oh well that was that's true to alcohol oh, yeah, or yeah, drugs yeah, yes, and yeah, yeah. when it, when these days it's like you've got guys that used to own businesses, the country collapsed, they lost their house, they yeah, lost yeah. their wife, yeah. they they went it's it's a mad it's a road, mm. and obviously mm. you you've seen it by meeting these people as well. That's, that's not, it. I mean, like look, it's not e it's not like easily like it used to be where somebody I, was an alcoholic and and all of a sudden now they're homeless. It doesn't yeah, and I didn't try to just portray you know I just tried to portray it in as real a way as it actually is. I mean, one other fellow that I met in the streets up on like Grafton Street, um, off Grafton Street, South Down Street. It was like late at night, you know, I'd been out filming like all day, you know, meeting different people on the streets. And uh, so it was towards the very end, all the clubs and bars and stuff were sh sh closing. People were, you know, it was getting quiet. Still the last few stragglers, but there was a, down South Down Street, I saw this fellow who was like, you know, I don't know, he had his back to me, you know, in the beginning. And uh, he was like a pure silhouette and he's like this strange kind of figure. You know, just when I was looking, I was like, that's bloody, that looks, I could just tell he just didn't fit into the environment. He didn't look like he was Irish, you know what I mean? Or so, he was out of place. So, I, so another fella kind of came from up the road and, and passed this guy. And uh, I realised, okay, he must be doing anything like sinister or whatever because, you know, he'd come by and, you know, that kind of thing, just pass him without sort of, without anything happening. Uh, anyway, I approached your man and he was there like sort of like trying to light a cigarette. He was, you know, fairly intoxicated. He had a number of drinks. But um, he sat down on the ledge and then I got speaking to him. His name was Jack. He was uh, originally from Ballymena, but he, like as a seven-year-old boy, I think, or yeah, around that age, he was brought by his mother to Australia and never saw his father again. So he was raised in S Australia. He had a successful kind of business that he opened, like a roofing and uh, building business at about, I think, in his early 20s. He ended up buying his first house by 25. And then he kind of like, he sort of, he told me that his wife sort of, he had two kids, but his wife stopped putting out. And uh, so he left, you know, and then he came back to Ireland, left the house for the kids. So that's just like, you know, a short version of the story. We spoke about like the situation, the difference between Sydney, home, like any homelessness over there and then here. So, um, but anyway, you know, for me, like, like I could see that he had a kind of a drunk drink problem, but um, at the same time, he looked like well-dressed, he was clean. He wasn't like making a mess or anything like this, you know, he was tidy, uh, wasn't disrespecting the streets or whatever. And um, yeah, so he he, honestly, he looked like he could have, you know, he could have been like a potential film star or something, you know, he had a kind of a look about him. And um, I just thought like, right, well, this is just, you know, someone's uncle or someone's dad, you know, he's had a, b a bad stroke of luck and he's ended up on the streets. So anyway, I filmed him, then I filmed another fella after that who kind of came along and, you know, that kind of thing. But um, five days later, a fella died down in Suffolk Street. Um, and I, I'd heard about it. I was still in Dublin at the time. And uh, it was the second death, homeless related death that week. And uh, so I looked into it a bit more because I was like, fuck, man, I could have been like any of those people I met that, that, you know, at that time or in the past. You know? And then when I looked into it in more detail, I found out it was Jack who had died. The fella who, yeah. I've yeah. seen this is yeah. And um, don't really it. yeah, you probably heard about it, right? You yeah. probably read about it, and um, so then, like you know, there was a vigil and this kind of thing, and you know, people were and you, you knew know, the story then, yeah, well, I knew this, is, yeah, like I'd met him face to face. He worked in like Apollo House, actually helping out as a chef there as well. But then, shortly a couple of days later, like the the press released a story that um, Jack had been like deported from Australia. 
uh, due, due to like a lit- litany of convictions that he built up over the years. He'd been in and out of prison and... Uh, yeah, so I found all this kind of stuff like very hard to believe. I thought it must have been a case of like mistaken identity or something because I'd met him and I thought, you know, this there's no way this can be true. Like th- this guy who I met would have done those things, you know. But um, like I eventually realized that it, it was true, you know, that you just don't know, you know, the, the, the background. Even though you meet someone face to face, you don't know what they could have done in, in the past. And, uh, you know, homelessness doesn't choose, you know, nobody has to, you know, you know, or we don't, as a society, get to choose who, who's who's homeless and who isn't. Yeah. You know, and uh, but yeah, it was just like a what, kind of what I'm saying is that anyone who, who ends up on the streets, they can come from any sort of background, any kind of situation. It's it, it just varies so much, and uh, yeah, I just thought it was. Oh, it is. There's there's there's, there's a multiple uh, yeah. of situations now where there wasn't a lot, and uh, the sad thing that I am. I think that is going to happen now is that mm. some of these kids that are growing up in these situations now yeah. that never had a home until three years of age and stuff like that that are struggling eating yeah. uh, uh, takeaways every single night mm. they're probably going to be the damaged society that is in mm. the future mm. and unfortunately I think that for this, the society to go the way it goes uh, the, the, the Fina Fall Ireland or the Fina Gale Ireland is a um, it needs it needs them people. It needs yeah, yeah. damaged people. It needs people to be able to shine into the background. Um, there's a picture Robin's gonna stick up now at the at the at the end of this, and it's it's um it's a food bank in 1916 um under British rule, right. and the next picture is this one here, is a food bank in 2019 under Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael rule. So when it comes to voting and it comes to these situations, um. I will leave it to you ourselves to make these decisions, but if we continue to uh, decide this fate, as I said, it's a hundred years, um, we can change this. We can do this now. Mm. It was mm. a pleasure to have you on, Scott. You no know, worries. you're Thank an you honest man, no, and we'll promote you, this as much as possible because um, this is what we're looking for. We're yeah. looking for ordinary people to realise what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. That was episode 108 of No Shame. We hope you had a good Christmas and you didn't eat too much, but get your ass back to the gym and get after it this year. Happy New Year as well. Happy New Year as well, yeah. This is because it's New Year's Eve at 12 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Look after yourself. Oh, you forgot it was New Year's Eve, lads.